This is Dave, and I'm here with Ethan, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 149 Inch. On this episode, it's the conclusion of our interview with Weird Al Yankovic's hilarious longtime keyboard player, Ruben Valtiera. It's Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast. You know what, Ethan? Let's do something a little bit different this episode. I don't want to reflect on last episode. I don't want to even cover any of the possibly exciting Weird Al-related news that happened since our last episode. Screw it, Dave. I'm with you 100%. I'm just so excited for us to conclude our interview with Weird Al Yankovic's hilarious longtime keyboard player, Ruben Valtiera. So let's skip our sponsor ads this episode, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on now, Ethan. I'm just not ready for that kind of commitment. Ouch! Sorry, yeah. I was just getting a little rebellious there for a minute. This episode is brought to you in part by vegan burrito restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in quesadilla Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering, loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit BurritoSquared.com and WizardBurger.com to order ahead. Well, you know what happened last time we skipped the Burrito Burrito ad? Oh boy, we still have those Etch-a-Sketch drawings to prove it. And Ethan, you do remember what happened the last time we skipped This Week in Weird Al Related News. The horror! Oh, it was horrible! You, you don't have to remind me, Dave. Uh, I guess that means it's now time for This Week in Weird Al Related News! Well, we have a few updates to report regarding Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Last Wednesday, shortly after episode 148 inch of Dave and Ethan's 2000 inch Weird Al podcast dropped, Rolling Stone shared some exciting news about some of the cast appearing in the film. I think it's no coincidence that they save news for after our podcast to drop. It is a conspiracy, Dave! Anyway, (laughs) Weird Al followed up shortly after the news dropped with confirmation on his social media accounts. The biggest news is that the part of Madonna will be played by Evan Rachel Wood. Wow, such a great choice. He also confirmed the role of Dr. Demento will be played by Rain Wilson. Now, if you remember the original trailer, that part was played by Patton Oswalt. We can only imagine that Patton must have been asked to reprise his role, and he said, gotta pass. And Nick and Mary Yankovic, Al's parents, will be played by Toby Huss and Julianne Nicholson, respectively. All this news about the cast dropping is making me even more excited for this film. I didn't know that was possible. (laughs) Well, Dave, I hope you didn't read Jim Kimo West's newest newsletter because he confirmed that Jack Lancaster was cast to portray him in Weird the Al Yankovic story. Now, there's not a lot of information on Jack Lancaster on IMDb, but we are really excited to see his portrayal of Kimo. And I'm also really excited to see if he writes podcast theme songs as well. (laughs) Well, in other casting news, John Bermuda Schwartz updated his Facebook profile picture to show the actor that will be portraying him in the film. So if you want a sneak peek of that actor, be sure to check out John Bermuda Schwartz's personal Facebook page. But that tricky Bermuda didn't post the name of the actor, just the picture. Our intern Frank did a reverse image search on that photo that Bermuda posted, and we have to admit, the photo very, very closely resembles actor Tommy O'Brien. Just saying. And if all of that is not enough for your greedy little brains, if you want additional rumors and spoilers (laughs) about Weird the Al Yankovic story, you can always check out its IMDB page, which continually gets updated with additional cast and crew members. Now, last Friday, Weird Al shared on his social media that Daniel Radcliffe's role as the titular character was finished, but there are still a couple more days left of shooting. 
Now, his post included what appeared to be Daniel's trailer because it had a printed name tag that said Weird Al. Now, of course, that could be Weird Al's trailer, or it could be Daniel's character Weird Al trailer. We may never know. Well, he was tweeting about Daniel, so my suspicion is it was Daniel's trailer. But eagle-eyed listeners may have noticed that in the bottom right of the sheet of paper, there appears to be a logo. Could that be the official logo of Weird the Al Yankovic story? Will Dave get that logo tattooed on his butt? Only time will tell. Well, in other Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West related news, Kimo mentioned in his latest newsletter that he has two new albums coming out. Now for the first one, he describes it as a meditative world fusion CD called Alam Akua with the Billboard number one charting artist, Joss Jaffe. Kimo also noted that he's finishing up a new CD with Hawaiian falsetto singer and songwriter Leah Connie Pryor. Their first single, Pua Ahi, is scheduled to drop on March 25th. We are obviously very excited for these albums and will share more details as they become available on future episodes. Weird Al fans around the world have rejoiced because, get this, there is a brand new Weird Al song. Yes, season two of the FXX show Dick Town features a brand new theme song by none other than Weird Al. I guess if Weird Al wrote the theme song, we are going to have to check Dick Town out. Well, the song is great, so I'm hoping the show's great too. And Huntington, New York has been added to the list of cities hosting a stop on the unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour. The show will take place on Friday, May 13th at the Paramount, and tickets go on sale to the general public this Friday, March 11th at 10 a.m. Burrito Burrito time with pre-sales earlier in the week. Season 2, Episode 4 of Hanging with Dr. Z dropped on Monday and features none other than Weird Al. If you want to check out this surely bizarre interview with Weird Al, <laughs> head on over to HangingWithDrZ.com for links and information. And the wife of Weird Al, Suzanne Yankovic, appeared on the March 3rd episode of the podcast Good Friend with Jamie Lee Curtis. Each episode of Good Friend features Jamie Lee Curtis having conversations with her closest friends and people she just wants to get to know better. Oh, Dave, didn't you briefly meet Jamie Lee Curtis backstage at a Weird Al show? I did. I did meet Jamie once. All right. Well, that must mean that you're best friends, pretty much. How long before she runs out of people and you're on her podcast? You know, it would be a great honor to be on Jamie Lee Curtis's podcast. So, Jamie, please reach out to our intern, Frank, at your convenience to work out the details of my appearance. Dave, remember when we mentioned Jared Tauber and Amanda Cunningham and their interview with Weird Al were nominated for the Intercollegiate Broadcasting Systems Award for Best Celebrity Interview? Yeah, of course I remember. Jared prepared for the interview by listening to our podcast and was able to make some very cool deep cut references as a result. That's exactly right, Dave. I am so glad to announce that they won the award. Wow. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast, congratulations to Jared and Amanda. Okay, let's jump back into the second half of our interview with Ruben Valtiera, already in progress, right where we left off on episode 148 inch. Ruben, if, if you could take a look, I sent you the artwork that I'd love for you to react to live on the show. Why are you doing this? You just want, to, you just want me to be sad, don't you? You just want me to be sad. Okay, I'm going to look at it. I'm looking at the photo. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen that. Where'd you see I've it? I've got it. You have it? <laughs> yeah, I have it. I have a, I have a, it's sitting right here. It's, it's like a five by eight. Uh, it's like a postcard. It's right. from you guys. You sent it to me. Oh, well, I don't, I don't remember. It says Dave and Ethan's 2000 Weird Al podcast. And it's, <laughs> so good job. Yeah. You like it. Good job. You like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It's it's kind of cool. Did you? And you've seen my other one where I'm shooting the uh, electricity, the blue electricity, out of my fingertips, and you know, and paralyzing out. Yes, right? definitely. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that was made for me by a, a company called Galaxy Audio. Okay. So I need to take I need to take a moment to uh, to publicly thank my um, 
the people that the companies that I endorse, if you if you're OK with that. <laughs> sure. Um, well, Kurtz, yeah, do, Kurtzweil yeah. has come through and uh, they're beautiful. Uh, Brian Pistoni, who's uh, the, the head rep, the head guy there, he just takes care of everything I need. Everything I need uh, it is so cool. And uh, I started using uh, on stage stands. So I've got a, a very nice uh, uh, a new setup for the uh, for the stands for my keyboards. It looks really nice. Oh, cool. And uh, I just wanted to th uh, take a moment to thank those guys. So um, <laughs> without them, I couldn't do the couldn't do the show. Can you share some of that money you just got paid for the plug with us? No, no, no. <laughs> the thing is, is that if, if I need something, they like if if somebody drops the keyboard, you know. And, uh, you know, we can't go to the store and get a Kurzweil because, I mean, these are like custom built keyboards yes. and and uh, they don't stock them in, you know, in music stores. And you'll be in East Podunk, you know, <laughs> uh, Arizona or something. And they're like, Kurtz, what? And so I have to we have to phone the rep and he actually like um, they they deliver it overnight. Wow. We try to make it through, oh, but wow. we do. But uh, but they actually supply me with duplicates. So if something screws up, you know, I go to the to the next to the duplicate synth. So I'm actually carrying two of everything out there. Oh wow! And it's, oh wow! And, and most people would die for that. And and the thing is, these guys have been taking care of me for like 30 years now because they were smart. Oh, you know, and and the crazy thing is, is that we were at. You, you ever heard of the Nam Show? You yes, know, of the, course. The Nam Show. Well, a lot of people don't, but uh, but you guys are cool. Of course, you, you've heard <laughs> of me three times. <laughs> I'm there and like right after the first tour, and and uh, you know hanging out and um, you know going into all the booths and this and that, and Al is there too. And we were just hanging out, and he looks at me and goes, "You want to take a walk?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And I go, "Where?" And he goes, oh, "Anywhere." And I'm like, "Cha ching!" <laughs> <laughs> and I went to all the places that you know, all the keyboards and stuff, the places, the booths that I loved, you know, the keyboards that I loved. And I walked in, and they're like, and I'm like. Hey, I'm Ruben. You know, and these guys are all like, "So what?" You know. <laughs> and then I dragged in Al. I pulled him into the picture, and I go, "Meet my boss." And, <laughs> and it was genius. And they're going, "What do you need?" You know. And so, so Kurzweil has been uh, Kurzweil has been doing wow. that, uh, taking care of me for thirty years, and and, and it's like see, unbelievable. You know, unbelievable. So I had to say, uh, do a shout out to those guys. Anyway, the, enough of that. Sorry, fans. I'll, I'll start talking about gummy bears now, if you wish. <laughs> Before we get to the gummy bears. So on your Twitter, oh on your Twitter page at Ruben Valtier one, you did post a picture of your setup uh, very recently. Oh, yes. And the it says Kurtzweil K. Two seven. Oh, that's the uh, Kurzweil K twenty seven hundred. Uh, the cool thing about Kurzweil, and I, and I have asked, you know, these guys actually phone me up before the tour sometimes, and say, "What do you need?" And I'm like, "I don't need anything. I'm fine." They go, "No, what do you need?" And I'm like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> really?" <laughs> and and so this time I said, "Well, uh, do you got any, you got anything new to promote?" And they go, "Yeah, we've got the new flagship. Uh, would you mind?" Could you go in and, and learn it and, and actually display it, you know, use it on the Al show? So I'm like, yeah, sure. Because I tweaked everything back in November. Okay. I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure everything was fine. And they tweaked everything back in November. And they said, you know what? I got the time. So I, uh, I got the 2700, which is their new flagship. And uh, I learned it. And I was able to transfile, uh, transfer files over to it. And that's saved my butt. And... Um, it's great. I mean, the first, the, the old synths that I had by Kurzweil were, were, you know, beyond. But, I mean, this one's even better. So, I'm, uh, it's called the 2700. And uh, it's, I'm able to do anything that I can think of, I can do with the synth. Anything that I can think of, you know. And so, so and, and synthesizers don't do that. Usually they'll come, there'll be some with one good sound. And that's what they're known for. This this one 
and you want it to sound like this synth or that synth or that piano or the, this or orchestral thing or blah, 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 or you want to load samples in, you know, you know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about samples, right? Yeah. Am I giving away all the secrets? All the secrets. I guess I shouldn't be doing away all the secrets. I guess I shouldn't be doing this. Let's talk about Dave Rossi's tattoos. Now, <laughs> no, we need to we need to go into gummy bear land a little bit. We need to talk about no. how it's a twenty seven. That is, you know, the weird L number. Oh, that's what you mean by it. Hmm. Interesting. I hadn't thought about that. About that. No, the <laughs> the model of the synth is called the twenty seven hundred. Huh? No, gummy bears. You know what? It's just mm, uh, let's see. I need to keep my I need to keep my mouth shut. Ask me another question. Sure. Let, let's go back to the uh, the uh, unfortunate return of the ridiculously self indulgent, ill advised vanity tour. Which song? Say that three times fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which which songs, Ruben, are you most looking forward to performing uh, on this? Uh, tour? Last time that I mentioned a song before we went out, I actually got some flack from Al for saying, "Please don't tell the fans what we're going to be playing." You know? <laughs> okay. Let's change the question. How about what has been your favorite song to perform on a Weird Al tour? Is there one from the history of your 30 plus years with Al that is just the most fun to play? For a while, um, Jurassic Park oh, yeah? was, was pretty cool because I had a lot to do. Okay. So the more you have to do in a song, is that you like that more? Or do you like the songs where you can take it easy? Um, no, no, I don't like to take it easy at all. I, I spend I spend my entire day out on tour taking it easy. Do you, do you know what a day like? Have you ever thought about what a what a tour day is like? I mean, do the I wonder if the fan I, I wonder if the fans know what a tour day is like. Well, walk us through it. Walk us through a tour day. Okay, where do you want to let's let's start Let's start at the very beginning in that uh, 12, 12 a.m. is the bus call. You're supposed to be on the bus at 12 a.m. And as you know, okay. that we've never done residencies, really. So we're on the road where we do, we're doing, you know, we're on the road every night. We're always doing these one-nighters, sometimes two-nighters, but mostly one-nighters. Yeah. And so we're on the bus at 12 a.m. And then sometimes we're lucky enough that and in the last tours, it's been getting better. Where we'll actually get into the hotel like at three or something or two thirty, but most okay. usually they have us drive a far, you know, a long distance, and we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the place at about six thirty, six six thirty maybe seven, to the hotel. We mm -hmm. we we take our stuff in. We groggily go in. You know, it's, I don't sleep on the bus. I, I just I just I can't. Uh, I, just impossible. Okay. So I, I groggily get out of the bunk, and we all make our you know we grab our stuff and we go into the hotel. Um, we go to the rooms. Uh, some guys have already slept, and so they do their day. But for me, I I go to sleep. I, I get up at about twelve. Um, I do coffee, and then I go down to the gym. And I get on the treadmill and I'm in the gym for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I come back. Um, I work on stuff, you know, online, you know, deal with what, whatever business and this and that. And then at five o'clock, um, we're, we're, we're supposed to be in the lobby. Okay. And, and, and so we get picked up uh, by the runner at the lobby. They take us to the venue. We check out to, to see whether, you know, anything's weird or everything's in place for the, you know, the instrument wise. Um, okay. Now we have to, we, we have to rehearse uh, two songs um, because what we do is we rehearse the new, um, we rehearse the new cover tune. Okay. You know, the encore tune. And then we rehearse the one for tomorrow. Oh, cool. Okay. And in oh, other gotcha. words, right. so on tomorrow, then that first, that tune that we rehearse for tomorrow, and now that's the first tune that we rehearse, and then we rehearse the next tune for the other tomorrow. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Right? You're always so, one day ahead. Yeah. 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 So, so the thing is, is we do, we, we make sure we do that and make sure that it's okay and run it through once. Um, and then, um, then we do dinner and then we wait around for, uh, for, for, for the show, which starts maybe at about eight. Now you, you do emails, so so he's on until about eight thirty, eight twenty, eight thirty, 
another another 10 minutes and then we start the show we're off by 10 and we go back to the dressing room and we wait to get on the bus <laughs> <laughs> and and that was the day and this is every day that sounds like a this great day I'm, I'm here going yeah but but come on wait a minute it's like okay on the bus waiting to get to the hotel okay now we're in the hotel waiting to get picked up by the runner and now we're picked up we do whatever we're waiting for the show and then we do the show and now we're waiting to get back on the bus <laughs> six months straight <laughs> so so you tell me you can see why i've gone crazy but the the uh the um i, I forget the question though what was the question was the question have we gone beyond you know what was my favorite song to play i think that was the question yeah <laughs> Well, for for a while, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, Jurassic Park. Oh, because uh, and, and because you said, is it because you, oh you like doing more? You like having more to do rather than, or do you like having less? Right, no, right. I like having more because I'm already doing less. I mean, we're just sitting around waiting. It's all about waiting, waiting for the bus, waiting for the runner. Waiting for the show, <laughs> waiting for the bus. You know. So that so your laughter though is nervous laughter because it's like oh my god, this is like this is like scary, you know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of lot of waiting around. So so the thing is, oh, I want to do as much as I can during the show and play as much as I can, and especially if they're good songs, if it's just. If, if it's a crappy song because it's a parody of, you know, even though the parody is good, but it's still a crappy song, <laughs> you know? I mean, what, what was, you, you look, I'll, I'll ask you, what, what was your least favorite parody in the past couple of years? Oh, boy. <laughs> You must have had one. See, see, Ruben's going controversial on you now. Yes, very controversial. Oh boy! You know? <laughs> yeah, like how about trapped, uh, trapped in a drive-through? How about that? Because there's just like you're just playing the same note over and over and over again, or, you know, or whatever. For me, this is going back a couple tours, but there was one song. It was a parody. Uh, it was called Trash Day. Oh and, right, and that one. That one to me, Trash. I mean, I could have personally done without that one. What's that one parody? I forget. Hot in here. Oh right. Oh, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's. Uh, I, I have, uh, I have a, I have a great dislike for that song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we agree on something. <laughs> I and I have a great dislike for that song because, um, uh, because for some reason uh, Al just. I'll just have the track play, and I was lip syncing. Oh, and I hated oh, it. I hated it, and I and I said we can never do this again. I will never lip sync again. And I I, I just got very very serious with him. I said, well, I will not do this. I will not lip sync these silly tunes. They could be played with one finger. <laughs> I'll not go there. You know, it's just wrong. You know, and and it's 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 not it's uh. It's um, it's unfair to the audience because it's too easy to just go in and do a Milli Vanilli thing. <laughs> now he wasn't doing Milli Vanilli, but but the thing is, I was right, right. And, and I, so so the, so that's the reason that I hate that tune, and that's the reason mm. that I want to do more than you know than usual. Uh, I've always liked. Uh, I do like playing. Uh, I do like playing uh, the Saga Begins. Oh, of course. Because you know it's like yeah, that's the most Ruben forward song. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, is that it's 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 a challenge because it has to be it has to be perfect, or else Al, you know, you know it's uh, Al. Um, you know, I'm under the I'm under the I'm under the microscope all the time <laughs> because Al needs my keyboards to help him stay in tune. So he has my keyboard, my, my main keyboard, really high, really hot in his monitor mix. So every single note I play, he hears it better than anything. It's screaming <laughs> in his ear. So if I play anything different or weird, he's such a stickler that he will, you know, he will give me notes 
It's like I, I'm hoping as I pass him that he's not going to go, you know, like after the show, that he's not going to go, Ruben, I have a couple of notes. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, I, I just like if he's if there's if there's no news, that's good news. In other words, it's like I have to play the thing perfectly every night or else he'll hear it and he wants it to be exactly perfect. And so that's why I like things like uh, the saga begins where I have to do the spotlight thing where it's just me and him mm -hmm. it has right. to be perfect it has to be you know a pause here the pause has to be this long the you know this note has to come right before this other note you know just just minute things that people don't even hear you know is this, you know, i'm sure the audience is probably falling asleep by now no, this... <laughs> right oh ruben we love this stuff Come on. I hope you do. Okay, I want to take a little bit of a detour since you you mentioned the saga begins. Um, Go for we, it. We spoke recently to Craig Armstrong. We spoke to... Craig Armstrong? You're kidding. You spoke to Craig Armstrong? Yes. We spoke <laughs> yeah. to uh, Roseanne. Wait a Michael... minute. Craig, you spoke to Craig Armstrong? Yeah. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, so speaking to him, speaking to Roseanne McElvain, who used to do, you know, hair and makeup for Elle, we, oh, we, okay. we heard all about how insanely hot it was filming out in the desert for The Saga Begins. People were passing out, and you're out there, you know, in a black, you know, shawl or whatever, playing the piano. What was that experience like? I was fine. Like? It was fine. I was, it was, I was fine. It, it, I know, it wow. was hot, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. Bad hot. I think that uh, I think that the black actually doesn't seem to absorb. I, I thought it'd be the other way around. I thought the black would have absorbed, you know, because I was doing the right, universe. right. I thought it would have absorbed the, the heat more, but it, it it just didn't. And I was I was fine. I drank my water and stuff, but uh, yeah, there were there were some people getting sick. That is so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> so long ago. Have you ever seen the uh, the the uh, the videotapes of the Doctor Demento twentieth uh, anniversary, the first show that I ever did with Al? You know, yes, it's, it's been a while, but I have seen that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's on it's online somewhere. It, it's it's all degraded. I mean, it's, I mean, it's all you know, it, it, it's all pixelated and yeah. stuff. It's right. just falling. It's so old. My God, it's like even 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 like I think Steve J was actually in his mid. 1500s <laughs> then, um, I love Steve what am I talking about anyway go on go on I'm, I'm really I'm really worried about uh, you know making your friends are you making the fans t too tired are we doing okay we're doing fine we're, we're doing, doing great fine. okay well you can you can edit out like like uh, like at least you know Three quarters of all this, right? It'll be only five minutes long by the time we're, we're our intern in <laughs> edits and all. <laughs> Ruben, welcome Wait. to the show. Hey, you guys. So, so Ruben, thanks for having. Thanks for being here. Oh, okay, goodbye. <laughs> so, I'm, while we're on, while we're on uh, music videos, I'm curious. You know, what was your experience like in Pentium's headline news? Is there anything else that you, you know, were on the set for? Uh, Pentium's was, uh, Pentium's was frustrating because I was on the set for it and I participated in some stuff, but when you saw the final product, you didn't see any of me. Um, I, in, you know, from the get go, I actually had to start, um, I had to, I had to start doing things to actually get into the camera in, into, in, in, yeah, into the, into the camera, uh, for, for any of the videos or any of the performances. When we did Arsenio back in 92, um, we, we did Nirvana, and I was watching the monitor as I was playing. You know, I was watching kind of the monitor where they was showing the final kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cuts and stuff. And I saw that I hadn't been shown once. <laughs> and so I oh. said, well, screw this. And on the final choruses, I went out and bef behind Al, I did like a backward somersault or something. <laughs> Like that and la landed once again on my head and everybody saw it and everybody remembered it but i had to do stuff like that otherwise you know they... but the thing is is after all these years is what i have to say i'm very uh i i still consider myself very lucky um 
to to be part of this. And and the thing is that I've let any sort of ego or frustration that uh, because I was always a I was always a hot shot um, uh, from before I was playing with Al. I was always I was always the guy that was featured, you know, because of my playing. Mm -hmm. And then it and then mm -hmm. it went, once I started playing with Al, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about my playing, and I had a problem with that for a while. But now at this stage, I'm mean, well. Yeah, I'm happy to be anywhere. But the thing is, is that no, I'm 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 just of the realization um, that I'm here to support Al. And it's the same way the Bermuda has always thought, but I'm here to support Al. It's not about me. It's not, it's not my show. It's about him, you know? So, so I'm just, like I've said before and many times over and over again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really happy to be here. I'm glad that it's still going on. I'm really glad that the COVID thing is, is uh, drawn, you know, starting to move on. Yeah. And we're all going to be able yep. to uh, see each other again and and go to the shows. Um, I've I've heard the uh, uh, the adjust adjustments they've made for the meet and greets. There will be meet and greets. There will be uh, a VIP stuff. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Al will not be Al will not be hugging people. Right. You know right. where they they all jump on him and hug him and this and that. <laughs> um, so so but at least there will be that and. Um, and then also, uh, you know, I'm going to have my flyers out the, on the merch table, directing people to come to my website, oh, cool. which is going to be, which is going to be a much more up and running. I'm going to go beyond Facebook when I get back, as I was saying, like cool. three hours ago in the beginning of the show. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to go beyond Facebook. I'm going to get on many platforms, multiple platforms, and be doing my thing. Uh, because like I said, if I can actually just stay at home and play, you know, play, um, with either my group on camera or just me solo with tracks and, mm -hmm. you know, people are subscribing and I can monetize that. I'm happy with that because I really don't, you're going to get there in about 40 years when you're my age. <laughs> you know, you're going to get there where you just don't want to get on the freeway at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> because the only people that are on the freeway at two o'clock in the morning are a bunch of drunks, you know. And, and, and so, yeah, and I just, I just don't, just don't want to do that. I'm going to be happy staying at home. Um, I'm looking forward to Al continuing to do this. What I really wish, in, in all seriousness, I really wish that he would keep doing his originals. Because his originals are really good songs, especially when the when the band is playing them over and over again and playing them really strong. The, I'm mm -hmm. I really enjoy playing those songs. I enjoy playing those songs way more than parodies. You know, um, songs like uh, Airline Amy. You know, where where yeah. um, where where Jim and I are are trading off guitar solos. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, uh, even stuff like Nature Trail to Hell, you know, oh, it's got all sure. sorts of parts, and and it's just, uh, you know, Velvet Elvis, you know, and getting into mm. the reggae and and, and uh, you know, and I start playing guitar parts when Jim is like doing soloing and I'm playing rhythm on the synth. It's uh, all those tunes. These are real. Or uh, uh, I remember Larry, you know. Or, uh, or you know what? You know what I do like playing? Well, why does this always happen to me? Oh, uh, right? yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, because because the thing is, and I feel sorry for Ben Folds, because Al wrote it in B, and no keyboardist likes playing it in B if you ever have played the piano. <laughs> it's like playing in F sharp or something. <laughs> and, so, and so I feel sorry for him. I actually went and I transposed the keyboard. So I'm actually playing in a different key. Even though it's coming out in B, huh? But it, it's hmm. it's such a great it's such a great song, you know. Al Al has a lot of great original songs, and I'm hoping that he just keeps going out and playing those. Uh, the tour manager was saying that when we first started the Vanity tour, they weren't they really didn't know whether it was going to go over, and they were going to fill the houses. And once they saw that night after night the houses were filled, the tour manager was going. I could have booked us here for three nights in a row, wow. for all these places, for two nights yeah. in a row. You know, 
I should have done it, but we didn't, they didn't know, you know, and it's his stuff. The stuff is that is coming off that good, you know? So anyway, I've got, uh, I'll be out there, um, doing the thing. And as everybody knows, they get a special prize. If they yell at a certain time, I know I'm going to get in trouble. For this. <laughs> if, they, if, they, if they yell during a moment of silence, El Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> they get a, if they <laughs> yell El Maestro, they will get a special gift from me, whether it's a CD, whether it's this, whether it's that. But I want to I get it to the point where Al is going well, and looking at me when they when everybody goes, El Maestro. You know, Dan's going to look at me and go, what the hell? And it's like, well, you know, it's like it's been two years and I was able to show people who I really am. You know. Yeah, it's it's a thing. Anyway, so have I bored you guys? You've bored the crap out of us, Ruben. We're so bored. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is well, amazing. See, you guys got all these questions. You got all these questions about the videos and this and that stuff that I was really not part of or, or whatever. But it's just like there's so many more things. And, you know. Yeah, well, let me ask you. I mean, I'm curious because I don't know if I've ever heard you talk about this. And maybe you have and I just missed it. But, you know, you've been playing with the Valtierra Latin Orchestra for many years, and I don't know if I really know how that came to be. How did that form? How did you end up starting the Valtierra Latin Orchestra? Uh, I just, I just had a, I always had a love for, uh, you know, salsa and stuff like that. I grew up hearing it, um, and uh, my parents were playing, you know, the Tito Puente records and stuff like that. And as I got better and better on, you know, within a band situation, I was trying to have, you know, the guys in the band play Latin stuff, but you really need a great, the right drummer to do it. Otherwise, it's mm -hmm. just not Latin. And uh, so when I was in L.A., I was surrounded by tons of great drummers. And I just started going in that direction more and then booking gigs. And uh, there's a, the last picture that I put up of VLO on the Facebook thing. You see the you see my friend Eddie Resto on bass. He was Tito Puente's bass player. He was Eddie Palmieri's oh, wow. bass player. He was Charlie Palmieri's bass player. These are very very important people in the salsa community. And then um, and, and and then uh, Richie Garcia was a, another guy uh, who was the uh, percussionist. And he played with a ton of great cats. I was surrounded by great drummers. So I went there and then I came up north. And I was lucky enough to be able to find Cliff Hugo, um, who played with Supertramp for 30 years, um, Ray Charles mm. for years, Melissa wow. Manchester, who was on tons of albums. I mean, this is a guy who was one of the top guys in L.A. And then he came up here and kind of retired, but came out of retirement to play with me. And then the percussionist, the drummer, uh, Kendrick Freeman, who is a maestro at the Latin Beats. And and they and there's nothing like what well, what I was bringing up here, and they so they said no no we got to do this because nobody else plays this kind of stuff, and mm. to be to be completely honest I make fun and I joke about the Grateful Dead thing, but it's really true. That's all they listen to up here. That's all the bands do up here. <laughs> you can laugh about it, but I'm very serious. It's very frustrating, you know, because mm. because. They really do come up and ask me to play trucking after I uh, oh, finish wow. like playing some salsa thing. You can uh, it's like going to a to a, a Japanese, you know, uh, kabuki theater thing and walking up to the guy in costume and the makeup and going, Do you do any Billy Joel? <laughs> and it's, like, it's the truth. I mean, they're coming up and asking me if I, I can do stuff. So it's very frustrating. But I, I do have an audience. Unfortunately, COVID kind of like uh, put a damper on it. But um, sure. so that's how the VLO thing came out. And I'm hoping to do more of it. But first, I got a mission. I got to hang out. <laughs> With emo, right? <laughs> For six months. Did you straight. stay in touch with emo at all between? Uh... No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> and my wife was here. Oh, you should be nice to him. He's he's. And I'm like, I am nice to him by not killing him. <laughs> 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 now, okay, so we just we heard about the VLO. I would love to go even further back. When were you first starting music? When did you become interested in music? There's the you remember the profile picture that I had on uh, Facebook? 
of me getting a toy piano for, on Christmas Eve from my dad. Do you remember? Do you remember that picture? Uh, no, but I, I trust well, you. Well, you can go to my Facebook page and you can see it right there. <laughs> you know, are you guys online? Of course, of course you are. Let's see. Let's see. Go to the Facebook. I, I don't think page. we're. Fa I don't think we're Facebook friends, Ruben. Well, you don't have to be for my. <laughs> you can still see my photos, and as a matter of fact, I don't want to be your Facebook right. friend. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, where <laughs> is that picture? Oh, I see it. Yeah, five years old. Oh, do you see it? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's when I started, and then I I started taking piano lessons. I I took that piano into my parents' bedroom and played like the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and they said, well, "I think the boy needs lessons." <laughs> and uh, I had lessons, I had classical lessons. That's why I have chops because you know I was taught scales and proper way to play, and Beethoven and Mozart and the whole thing, the basic repertoire basic classical repertoire. I did that. And then in college, um, I started trying to teach myself how to play jazz and this and that. Started my fusion, jazz funk fusion group in Santa Cruz in about 1980. I was already, I was already old. I was already in my twenties before I had my first band. Wow. Cause I had gone to college and I was serious, was supposedly serious about college. Yeah. Yeah. I went to UC Santa Cruz. How serious was I about college? <laughs> Jerry Garcia was our headmaster. Um, <laughs> and, and I do mean headmaster. Oh, wait a minute. I'll forget that. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Don't pay attention to Ruben. Um, <laughs> and I started that group. And then I was a big fish in a small pond. I came down to L.A. And within the year, um, I had to do the Dr. Demento. I had to. You notice I said. <laughs> I had to do the Dr. Demento. I was asked to do the Dr. Demento 20th anniversary where there was an orchestra, there was a rhythm section. I sat, I, I, I asked the guitarist in the rhythm section, what's your, well, what's your story? He goes, oh, well, we're Weird Al's band. Because Al was one of the guests. And I'm like, oh, really? And I go, well, we're, and I'm new in town, so you've heard this story, but I, I asked, uh, for all of the kids out there that have never heard this story, <laughs> I asked the guitarist, uh, I, who turned out to be Jim Kimo West, I said, well, Where's your regular keyboardist? And remember, I was new in town. And uh, Kimo said, uh, Kimo Sabe. Kimo said, <laughs> uh, well, Al really doesn't have one right now. Once again, I say, cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to do some shtick. And that's where I fell on my head during one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then we and we did like two two dates, one in San Francisco, one in L.A. with with uh, Dr. Demento and, and all the people, you know, all the people that were guests on the show that, you know, the records that he would play, you know, the Purple People Eater guy, the Bobby Boris, you know, Pickett, you know, doing the Monster Mushroom, Match, yeah. all those things. And, and then we said goodbye. And then I get a call about six months later while I was in France from Steve J saying, hey, um, this is Steve J, bassist with Al. You know, he really loved your stuff, and we're going out on tour. Would you like to come? And then the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. The rest is history. <laughs> so basically, I was not supposed to be playing this kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that I, I could play so many different styles, and Al saw it. Right. So he kept me, you know. And I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be here. So I can hang out with you guys and do two-hour interviews. How are you doing here? Am I boring you? Doing great. I love that. Doing I great. Love that. Yeah, it's a great story. There is no way a podcast can go for, for two hours, right? Yeah, we can cut it in half. We'll, we'll do a two-part. Yeah, our intern Frank will take care of it. Go ahead. Ask me a question. Sure. And, and, so, and, but 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 uh, it's got to be a good question. No more of these. Okay, all right, here, no here's, a these. What, here's a good oh, one. Okay, try me. We've been playing occasionally back into Ethan Ullman's archives on his old radio show, Alternative to Sleeping with Ethan Ullman. And we've been playing interviews with you when you were interviewing him. I don't remember when that date was. Well, we've only done one, really, haven't we? Has there been more than one? Yeah, we did two back on my old college radio show. That was just before Alpocalypse came out and then uh, right at the beginning of the Alpocalypse tour. I'm sorry. Go on. In one of those interviews, you had mentioned that you were at the Keswick Theater in Glenside, Pennsylvania. Right. And the theater was haunted. Yes. 
And I just wanted, I know you've been back to that theater several yes. times. I'm just wondering if there are any other strange incidents, you know, that happened in that theater or any other, anywhere else on the tour. No, it's just basically, and I actually even said this on an episode of Creature Features. I was interviewed, I was a guest on Creature Features. If I don't know if you have that where you are um, or some sort of regional uh, counterpart to it. Do you guys, do you have a... Show I'm not they, familiar with that. You know, where they, where they show like horror films and they got some like Elvira. Oh, kind of okay. Person, gotcha. You know? Yes. So while I was on Creature Features, I told the same story because they wanted to know. But uh, when we would play at this place, the Keswick Theater in Glenside, which was basically a very a suburb, it was a little nothing like movie theater pretty much, um, mm -hmm. uh, transformed into like, you know, a concert venue. Yeah. And, and it was in a little suburb of, uh, of Philadelphia. And all I know is that when, when I would play there, my synth would act up and just be weird. And, and uh, let's say the synth has like programs going from one to like, you know, 127 or something, just to say a number, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I would be playing the show and then the song would end, and then I would look at the synth, and the synth said, minus 4,033. Oh. <laughs> and there's no minus sign on the keyboard, on the numeric keyboard, the keypad. There is yeah. no way that it could ever have been yeah. entered. You know, a negative number, that is. There's just no way you could scroll the wheel, it goes to one. It goes the other way to 127, but, but you can't go into minus line. There's just yeah. no way this could, And this happened every time that I played. Wow. Wow. And it just, like, would screw me up and take me out of my zone. You know, because you, you want to be in a zone, you know, where you're not thinking about things. And then everything flows. You just let it flow. Then it's all good. And then there's applause at the end. And then, and then you get on the bus with email. Um, <laughs> see, see, that's why we can't do the latency, right? Because I need these pauses. <laughs> so anyway, we're doing, we're we're in catering like probably the fourth time that we're there or something. I don't know why we played there so many times. Um, it was pre William Morris, I suppose. Because once William Morris got his their hands on Al, then we were playing all these great, great places where and Al, you know, showed that he deserved to be there. Yeah. By, you know, kicking the doors down. Right. Radio City Music Hall, all the Greek oh, theaters, amazing. Hollywood Bowl, all those kind of places. And he showed that he deserved he was supposed to be there. Anyway, so we're at catering at the Keswick and I recognize the ladies. They've been doing, oh, we've been here for 30 years. We've been here, you know. <laughs> and then I go, can I ask you a question? And they're like, yes, of course. And I go, is this place haunted? And they go, oh, yes, of course. His name is Ralph. <laughs> Ralph. His name is Ralph. And I'm like, what? And they go, you see that, you see that doorway up there? And I go, yeah, because it was a door way above the stage or something off to the side of the stage and it's just this little door and they go he lives he lives in there <laughs> and I'm like going well, how? you're 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 does okay so you're not kidding no no and i go does does he ever have musicians ever said that oh that he goes in and screws with their stuff yeah wow wow i'm like oh my god you know so i'm here before the show at the keyboard, and uh, I think the opening montage is going on, and I'm, I'm just standing there, and I'm going, so Ralph, um, I, I am totally happy with you hanging out and jamming with us. Please be my guest. I am totally happy having you here, but just do me a favor. Don't, don't mess with the keyboard. It'll make me really happy if you don't, it'll make the show go really good. And But otherwise, please feel free to just hang out, join us, and, and jam with us. And nothing happened then. Wow. But every other wow. night, it always screwed up. Wow. You know, huh. powering down, it would power down for no reason. It would, uh, you know, it's like if you power down and then you have to wait for like two minutes for the thing to power back up. And by that, and at that, during that time, you know, the spotlight is on you because it would always power down 
right before the spotlight goes on you Ugh. and nobody else is playing <laughs> but you and al and the whole rest of the band are just like looking at you and tapping their foot and, oh. and al's going really ruben <laughs> you know <laughs> and i'm just here uh Oh, but I, I, you know, <laughs> and so that, so, so after I actually talked to him, he, um, he was cool. His name was Ralph. Ralph. Wow. wow. Ralph. Ralph. We'll have to get him on the podcast sometime. <laughs> uh, he might screw but, things oh, up for you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. Uh, but, uh, okay. Next question. That was a good one. But the next one better be better or else uh -oh. I'll have to make it. Uh -oh. I'll have to. Well, I'm curious about, you know, with the, the, the tour coming up and Al's filming the movie right now, are you guys having any time to practice in person with each other? No. Well, the, the, all the guys live in L.A. Right. We never practice. We, 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 the thing about it, the thing with Al's band is the guys are so good and they're, they're, they're super pros, you know. They're the most professional and they're very, very talented. So the thing is, is that there's no need for rehearsals unless we're like really trying to suss out new tunes and this and that. We're not playing new tunes per se. We're going to have a couple of new surprises and stuff that I won't talk right. about. But we, we're we going, and he knows that, I mean, he said in some of his notes um, that, you know, we're going to be playing songs that we've already played many times before. And so we're just going to shake the cobwebs out. So we... We don't we don't do like monthly rehearsals or anything like that. We only rehearse um, before the tour. We rehearse for like uh, we we'll rehearse uh, like on a Monday, you know, like four weeks before the tour, and then and then we'll rehearse on a Wednesday to give his voice a chance to uh, you know rest, mm -hmm. you know, because he might have blown it out on one because he's not used to singing out so strongly. Right. Um, uh -huh. You know, he's got to get back in yeah. shape. And then the next week we'll do two more rehearsals and then the next week we'll do two more rehearsals. And if we're doing production where we're doing all the, you know, all the videos and stuff like that, then we, we get together a little before then so that we do the music rehearsals first and then we bring in all the engineers and the techs and we work out all the timing stuff. Because, you know, it's like these guys, like when the lights go out, um, there's like 12 people on stage rushing around, you know, moving this, moving that, moving, and it's it's pitch black. But they're so they've got it so dialed in that they don't they don't run into each other or nothing. They know exactly where, mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be, and so we work out all those kind of kinks, and then the first first week or two we start ironing out like little things, and then it turns into the well-oiled machine that it's been for. All these many years, mm. um, you know the thing is, is that uh, aren't they talking about that Al, Al's band is up there now with like some of these longest running bands? I mean, like the Stones, they've they've got fifty years, right? Yeah, I mean, you guys would know this better than completely me. Completely unchanged. Is it, it was, I thought it was like ZZ Top and Weird Al, right? So, you know, it's like not many people <laughs> right like, lasted that long with the same right. lineup. Exactly, and so so uh, um, yeah, I, I mean you're right it, because I was just thinking the Stones and the Stones don't even they don't qualify for that they don't count or the Dead the Grateful Dead or anybody because they change members. Yeah. Right. But we've had the same members since 1991. Yep. You know, so so that's like what's that 31 years? Yeah. It's like come <laughs> on, you know. Incredible. So so. Anyway, where was I going with that? Ask me another question, and then, <laughs> and then, and then by then, all the fans should have like dried up by now, right? <laughs> so, mentioned the the film. We joked about it a little bit earlier in the interview. Can we talk about Dave Rossi's tattoos? <laughs> we talked about that. Does everybody know about Dave <laughs> Rossi's tattoos? Ruben, do you have any? Yeah. Do you have any? Have you done anything, or will you be in this film? Can you give us anything, or you're not allowed to talk about? I it? I know nothing about the film. Okay. I have not. I, I would talk to you about it if I knew anything. But the thing is, is I just stay out of Al's way. Okay. He's. It's like he told me many, many years ago. He was of the mind of uh, need to know basis. Okay. And basically, if I don't need to know something, then I don't 
you know, he's not going to tell me anything. <laughs> he's not going to phone me up. Hey, you know, something, this happened on the film set. No, no, he'll, he'll never do that. He'll never tell me. If I were to even ask him something about it, he, he would basically go, why? You know, why, do you, why do you want to know? And it's kind of sad. I, I'm, I mean, I would love for him, you know, to be in the loop. But at the same time, it's just a need to know things. So, so no, you know, there ain't nothing there. I was going to tell you something, but uh, I can't remember what it was. Um, uh, go on, go on, go on. Try me with another question. Yeah, we'll keep asking questions, and maybe you'll think it, think of what you were going to ask. But they got to be good questions. But in other words, right. because if well, I can make it a better question, then then you're, you're not doing your job. <laughs> I have to trust. All right. Them. Well, well, here, you've been playing with the band for thirty one years now, oh, and I'm gosh. just you're, you're going back out. You know, the unfortunate return of the ridiculously self indulgent, ill advised vanity tour. Thank you. And you know, <laughs> whether I on. On the upcoming tour or, you know, and any of these past tours that you've been on, I'm just curious, you know, what are some of your favorite venues to play at? Uh, I did like, of course, uh, I do like uh, Radio City Music Hall. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, the favorite was uh, playing at the Greek Theater in Berkeley because I had seen shows while, you know, growing up there. You know, I'd, I'd seen these great shows with David Sanborn and, and Al Jarreau and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um uh, I did grow up actually seeing, you know, Jay and the Green. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh, that was Bill Graham, the great rock impresario in San Francisco. You guys are too young. <laughs> you guys are too young. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Have you ever heard of Bill Graham? I'm not I'm familiar really with him. Wow, how sad. That's like, <laughs> have you ever heard of Murray the K? You know who the fifth Beatle was? <laughs> Have you ever heard of George Martin? Oh, here's George one. Martin, here, yes. Here's one that used to get me into trouble. I would ask, like, Bimbo, Bimbo hangers on the question. I would say, um, did you know that Paul McCartney had a band before Wings? <laughs> <laughs> I swear he to did? God. Yeah. And, I and, didn't these, know and that. these people would go, he did? What was it? And I, and I go, and they go, what was it called? And I go, the Beatles, <laughs> and they go, "You're a jerk." <laughs> so that's like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of here, you guys. You know, Bill Graham is the guy that that had the Fillmore West, the Fillmore East, Winterland, all those places. He helped. He helped with Woodstock. You still don't know what hmm. I'm talking about, do you? Guys, come on! <laughs> no weird Al stuff, Ruben. All right. Damn, oh man, I just almost swore. <laughs> I almost swore. This is terrible. Do you know do you know who the, do you know who the Grateful Dead is? Heard of them? Of course, we know who Grateful. Do you I know, know who, who Jefferson the Airplane is? I know who Jefferson Airplane is. Do you know who Santana is? I know who Santana is. Do you know who Bob Dylan is? <laughs> yes, I know. Who Bob do you Dylan know who is. the band is? Have you ever heard of the band? The band. I have heard of the band. Okay. Uh do you uh, how about the Doobie Brothers? course <laughs> yes i'm being serious here. how about the doobie yes brothers? yes how about yes, uh how about uh um uh slide the family stone yeah <laughs> yes uh how about neil young yep <laughs> yes do you know i saw all those guys in concert at the same concert wow in san francisco really wow. wow they were it was a benefit that bill graham put on the schools of san francisco asked him if they could, if he could do them a favor and put on a benefit, he said, "Okay, I'll, I got some people to call that I can call in." And he called all those guys. And uh, did I say Tower Power? Did I say yeah? I didn't say the Tower you Power. Did. Wow! Um, all those guys, Joan Baez, even Willie Mays got up and Ooh. talked. They threw joints at him. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> <That's> amazing <laughs> because he was going, "Don't do drugs! Don't do drugs!" And he was being oh, no. <laughs> with these cigarettes. Um, and, and and Marlon Brando got up and people started yelling, Stella! <laughs> anyway, that, that, <laughs> all those people for five dollars. Wow. What a at, show. At, at, Amazing. At like Keysar Stadium, which is basically like Candlestick Park or, or whatever in, in San Francisco. Wow. Park. Yeah. And and what Bill Graham put that on. This this is I got to see that stuff. Well, I'm glad that you got to see at least one decent concert, but if Weird Al is the only concert that you guys have seen, I'm going to start getting nervous. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, my life, uh, when I said goodbye to Al uh, at the end of the last tour, 
which was over what? Over two years ago, right? Yeah, 20, it was like two and a half. Yeah. 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 It's just like that's basically the last time that I really had much to, you know, having any interaction with him. I called him like once or twice in those two and a half years, and he told me that he really was holed up at home. He was not leaving the house. Hmm. And uh, because of the COVID, yeah, and I was, and of course, I lived in the woods and this and that, so I was leaving the house, and you know, and I had my studio, and uh, I was, you know, and I hang out so for 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 a while. I did, I have, you know, I didn't mingle with anybody, but then after a while, I started playing out. But he stayed, he stayed at home, and uh, really didn't have much to do with him. So it was really all about my music, and like once uh, once again, I'm just. I'm uh, here to say that I'm, you know, I was very blessed to be able to have the time that I that I was given. I made I made good use of the COVID time, mm -hmm. and uh, and it showed because I could really feel the difference. And my my good friends, you know, my my peers, um, said they could tell a major difference in my playing mm -hmm. after two years of doing this, because I was getting to play do what I really do. And uh, and the thing is, is that now I'm doing my I'm doing my day job, um, which is which is Al, and I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'll do it as professionally as, as I can. And I'll give him my all. I'll be I'll play as good as I can for him. It's going to be tough. It really is. Six months straight. It's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. But uh, but the thing is, is that I know that there's uh, we're going to do well because a lot of fans. Um, Need to, you know everybody's been waiting to get out. It's going to be mm -hmm. fairly safe by then, and then you know Al's legend is still preceding him. I mean, you know everybody knows who Al is, and everybody knows by now that he's just a great performer. That's a great show. Yeah. So that's the cool thing. I'm going to miss the girls. Of course, it was nice having the. It was nice having the girls. They were very. They were very sweet. Yeah. They were and and, and great singers. I wish. We could have the girls with us singing. Mm. That, oh, would that was amazing. such a fun, fun thing cool. to have on, uh, on the tour. Yeah, it was. I heard that you couldn't really hear them very well. I don't know what your experience was. Yeah, I could hear them. Oh, good. Yeah, I think some nights the orchestra was a little hard to hear, mostly in the beginning. But yeah, I, I didn't think I had an issue hearing Al's gals. We were we were very lucky with the orchestra um, because. Because, you know, it's like many times we were dealing with less than great orchestras, mm. you know, and, and they were actually able to. We had a good conductor uh, uh, with Eric Roth yep. and his and his dad came in yep, Arnie. and he did a mm -hmm. couple of shows, Arnie and, and Eric, and they did a couple of shows. And uh, I, I think I remember that one one orchestra had problems with the uh, with the Mission Impossible theme. Uh, you got to be a good drummer to be able to play hmm. in that in that uh, that uh, mm, that, uh, that uh, in ten eight, hmm. mm -hmm. which is boom 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 boom. So it's <laughs> one two three one two three one two three. It's like one two three one two three one two one two one two three one two three one two one two, and you add all that up and it's ten. You know, or you, you <laughs> subdivide it and it's five. And so people people have I have a problem playing in ten or eleven. Do you guys uh, even know about that kind no. of stuff? I'm going too deep. Too deep. I'm going too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Okay, back to gummy bears. Okay. <laughs> back to gummy bears. Well, Ruben, you know, on this tour, you know, there's said to be 133 mm. shows, and it's ending at Carnegie Hall. Have you performed at Carnegie Hall before? Are you excited about that? No, we, we had the chance to do that, and then uh, Al's management said, you know, we could actually get more people in uh, to uh, – either the, the beacon or something, I forget. And it turned out to be, you know, it was a better payday. I'm sorry to go there, but it's just, it was just better. It was better business. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so the thing is, is that they were, they've been trying to schedule a concert at Carnegie Hall on Al's birthday. So that would make, wow. that would be pretty that cool. That would have been cool. Yeah, so, <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. So the favorite places to play still, oh, Red Rocks yeah. was very yeah. cool. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Red Rocks, uh, the Greek Theater in Berkeley, uh, the um, the Hollywood Bowl, of course, 
and um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm excited. Uh, Dave and I will see you at the uh, Ryman. Oh, that's a cool place yeah. too. The, oh, the, the the Ryman Ryman or the 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 new the new. Yeah, uh, you, when you guys are in Nashville, it's the original Grand Ole Opry. The original, yeah, that's cool because we went in there and they said this is kind of like a church, and you you know we don't want you to be too crazy, and we we went in there. And blasted the place, and the crowd just blasted <laughs> us right back. It was the greatest. It was really cool, you know. And uh, and uh, the, there's uh, there a uh, Massey Hall in Toronto is interesting because because that's where some you know some very very famous jazz concerts with Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Bud Powell, oh. all those kind of people. Charlie Mingus, Max Roach. Uh, that's where this was. And then there's actually posters of a certain speaker in 1935 or something a certain speaker and and uh and let's say his name was his name was hitler yikes oh. he was he was the he was the cousin of adolf hitler or something yikes. Oh, wow and he came through yeah and so and of course playing the Fillmore, the old Fillmore in san francisco where you could feel the ghosts of janice joplin and jerry garcia mm. And those kind of people. So that was kind of, that was cool. That was cool. Very so, cool. And then, and the funny thing is, is that we forget about most of all these venues, but what we always remember is the catering. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's very true. You ask any touring musician, say, what's your favorite, what's your favorite catering on tour? You ask them that. That's a fun question. And you watch how they go, oh, they won't go, oh, I don't, I don't remember. No, no, they'll go, oh. Uh, the place, uh, the the Costa Mesa, and they'll get excited about it because this is all we look forward well, what's to. What's your What's your answer? Is it Costa Mesa? Costa Mesa was one, and then uh, we used to like the the West, the uh, the Westbury Music Fair, and mm. uh, and they always served us tacos. Hmm. Really, that's the weird thing. And we and then it's like Taco Tuesday, and we're going, but it's not Taco Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, okay, well, here's your tacos. Here's your tacos. And then years later, we went back and, you know, and they served us something different. You go, well, wow, this is great. You know, it's like you always, you always served us tacos before. We didn't understand. <laughs> and they said, oh, you told us on your rider that that's what you wanted. <laughs> so we always served you tacos. I'm like, what? <laughs> crazy do you have do you, you have know? anything spe that goes on the rider for you like is do you like diet coke or is there like a certain thing that they stock just for you just for me no we we all we all took a consensus yeah and started uh uh we, we were making sure that we got uh we got rid of the the meat platter you know yeah. uh, they, they would bring on tons of meat you know and it's like no we don't want, we don't want that much you know you just give us a little of this and uh, unfortunately, the after show stuff is is always pizza because by the time that they're able to order it or the, that they're still open, the only places that are right, open are right. these 24 hour pizza ah, places. Ah, gotcha. It's really yeah. a drag. You get really tired of pizza. Mm. Or Jimmy John sandwiches. And you know, you don't want to eat that stuff because you know that the guys, you've seen them with pictures of him and his shotgun killing elephants and giraffes. <laughs> yeah. and the stuff. Jimmy John like, guy? No, I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, oh, well, well, you know, with an elephant gun, and it's just like we can't eat this stuff. So mm -hmm. now, now we, we we ask for like certain fruits and 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 certain kind of like uh, sparkling waters, and yeah. this we're very low maintenance. Oh, sure, you know, very <laughs> low maintenance. Ruben, thank you so much for joining us and and telling us about how you've been keeping I warned you keeping busy, you know, between <laughs> the tours, and we're so excited to see you on the upcoming tour, the unfortunate return of the ridiculously self indulgent, ill advised vanity tour. We'll see you there for six months with Emo Phillips. And in the meantime, we'll check out your new website, RubenValtiera.com. Yes, we'll follow you on Twitter, RubenValtiera one. And during any silent moments in the upcoming tour, we will scream out, <laughs> El Maestro! <laughs> uh, yes, please. And there's the Facebook artist page, you know, uh, Ruben Valtier, the, the the artist page. And then, of course, there's my regular Facebook page. But if you look at it, you'll probably see that I don't have a lot of people on the Facebook page. I really keep my personal comments to just me and my, my close friends, the people that I've 
actually sh- shook hands with. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm I'm happy to. <laughs> I'm, I, I want everybody else to just come over and, and if they're interested, I want them to see what I do, you know, what, what my music is, because I I am I only I only support Al. I, I'm not all about Al, you know. My my, my tastes aren't those, you know, of, of Al's. So I, if you want to be my friend, please, you know, join me on my Facebook artist page, or 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 there's going to be a mailing list and a sign-up page. On RubenValtira.com, and there's I'm going to be uh, performing on multiple platforms in the future after the Al show. I'm going to make it a lot of fun, you know, and uh, it's 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 going to be all good. So I have to thank you guys for allowing me just to keep going on. I warned you <laughs> that I was go- that I was going to do this. I mean, I can't believe that you, like Steve J or Jim West, would ever go this this long. <laughs> and of course, you got Bermuda, and he's always serious. He's very serious, you know. But but uh, I'm just you know I'm just I'm just happy to be here. I'm a, and uh, things are just things are every is uh, so ironic, so weird that everything around us seems to be like falling completely apart. Right, spinning apart, and yet for me, everything is just getting better and better. It's it's just the craziest thing. <laughs> so it's a pleasure to do this with you guys, you know. And anytime you want to, you call and and I promise I won't go. I won't go this long. Thank you so much to Ruben Valtier for joining us for the past two episodes. It is always a treat to have Ruben on the podcast, and he is so hilarious. And he's always welcome on the podcast. Be sure to head over to RubenValtier.com. Check out the new website. And once the mailing list is up, be sure to join that so you can learn all about what's going on in Ruben's world. This episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota uh, beautiful, it's also walkable. Well, Dave, how was the McLeod and Meeker Celebrate Women hike on Saturday? Oh, you mean the one from Saturday, March 5th that started at 9 a.m. Twineball time at Darwin Dassel Park that was sponsored by She Ascends, Minnesota Women's Hiking Group, which was free for She Ascends members or $15 for non-members, and where walkers were asked to meet at Darwin Hill, where She Ascends requested that they bring a woman you want to celebrate. And the walk would be approximately two to three miles, which for our Canadian and international listeners who plan to fly into Darwin to walk was approximately 3.22 to 4.83 kilometers. Yep. So did you go? No. Ah, okay. So I guess visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next expedition. Discover Darwin more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Discover Darwin, and Jackson Scoggins. Our podcast is also supported by everyone in our Patreon family, with a special thanks to our amazing, close personal friend level Patreon supporters Frank from the Bank, Adriana, Zeb, Scott, UH Jeff, Javier, Kenneth, Jake. Blair, Jared, Allison, and also thanks to Kat and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly Wacky Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000 inch. There are awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast and access to secret episodes. Plus, you can learn how to become a sponsor of the podcast. And don't forget to check out our official merchandise over at shop.2000inch.com. Our line of We Hate Intern Frank merchandise makes the absolute best possible gift you can get everyone in your friend group, your family group, anyone you ever knew, anyone you ever hated, anyone in the entire world for National Meatball Day. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans. Join our Facebook community and post about Weird Al by visiting group.2000inch.com. And we also love it when we receive voicemail via our official 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, 347-SPATULA. 
Give it a call, and you might even hear your message in a future episode. For everything about our podcast, including incredible past episodes and guests, be sure to visit weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And while you're there, click on Black and White and Weird All Over bonus episodes for our special bonus episode book series, where John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his book page by page, picture by picture. Keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for subscribing and leaving reviews on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you are subscribed because it not only helps the podcast, but it's also part of a complete and healthy breakfast. Thank you once again to our wonderful and hilarious guest, Ruben Valtierra. Thank you to the Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song. And thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. And a big thanks to all of you, our listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast. And until next time, remember to kill and chill. Dave, I know we've talked about this before, and I've known you a long time. We've had this conversation a bunch, but you know, just to set the record straight, are you ever planning on getting a Ruben Valtiera tattoo? Well, you know what, Ethan? I've been keeping it a secret, but I actually have a tattoo of Ruben already. What? You do? Oh my gosh, where is it? Would you like to see it? Well, of course. Uh, D- Dave. Dave, oh, oh gosh, no. Oh, Dave, put put those back on. Dave, oh, come on, Dave. Dear gosh, this is a family-friendly podcast, Dave. Ah, 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 oh, no! That was Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 149-inch. Hey, Ethan, watch this. Now it looks like Ruben is talking. No! As everybody knows, during a moment of silence, if they yell El Maestro, they will get a special gift from me, whether it's a CD, whether it's this, whether it's that.